Good morning, folks. It has been an incredibly active 48 hours on our star. We've had numerous M-class solar flares, a number of CMEs, and things are starting to ramp up back here on Earth as well. We come to spaceweathernews.com and will be set firmly on the northwestern departing quadrant where that sunspot got active and began firing away. 193 angstroms is the best all-around way to watch the sun because you can see the flashing of solar flares, coronal ripples due to ejections, and also coronal holes. Of course, it is the solar flares that are the story of the moment. That's six M-class flares after weeks and weeks without one. We'll come to 94 angstroms, which emphasizes the extreme ultraviolet and X-ray light associated with solar flares and allows you to see the smaller ones on the south as well. What 304 angstroms tells us is that we've been having plasma release during the solar flares, and that means CMEs blasting out through the solar system as interplanetary shockwaves are happening too. Starting at the end of March, so you can see how calm the coronagraph was before the uptick, not much happening in the inner solar system, and then, with a fury, we've seen plasma clouds erupting and expanding to be able to hold dozens to hundreds of suns within their sparse expanse, None of them are going to strike Earth directly. Actually, all of them were unleashed at Saturn. But electrical coupling potential for Earth actually begins tonight and continues through Wednesday. We'll come back to that in a moment, but first let's see the sunspots. Flare Maker is now titanic as it turns away after being hilariously disappointing while it faced Earth. So we come to focus on the two southern groups right and left. Bigger grouping retains that delta magnetic mixing potential, but has yet to fire away in any significant manner. Incoming grouping is smaller, also appears that it might be magnetically separated. Solar wind here, trending downward as we await the next stream intensification. Geomagnetism is calming as well. But the now departed coronal hole should impact us today with its stream, perhaps tonight. Geomagnetic storms are likely to be short-lived, and with CMEs coupling, Jupiter in alignment with Earth and Sun in just three days, these massive coronal holes here, and the peak of the sunspot number, which should be going back down today with the departure of the big group on the north, means that this equals the most significant earthquake watch we have to offer, and it starts right now. The ground is already getting active with a notable increase in magnitude 5 events and in volcanic eruptions. This is the Fuego Volcano in Guatemala. Apparently the ash cloud was detected more than 3 miles high. These night eruptive phases are always the best to watch. And hopefully this releases some of the pressure that has us looking at Central and South America for an uptick to come. We also had the Assam Volcano in Japan go off. Nobody gets too near the top of that mountain, but these images came in on Twitter from locals in the minutes after it happened. Top story today is another look at the TRAPPIST-1 system. They're saying that Planet G, the next to the last one out in the line, might have the first unambiguously habitable planet signature, with plenty of organic material, up to a 90% water content to the planet, which once again suggests it's like the moon Rhea rather than a planet, and also because of its relative light being sufficient. While all the TRAPPIST planets orbit closer than Mercury does to the Sun, their star is much, much smaller. And so the relative light by comparison is this. You see the Earth and Mars up top with the TRAPPIST planets in their relative place below. For those keeping up with the long-term tracking, most scientists are looking at E and F as habitable choices some looking at D. Now here they say G is 90% water and gets enough light. Pretty sure I'm the only one thinking sub-ice bacteria on H insulated from the stellar flares of the host is the best place to find single-celled organisms. From interesting to tragic, tornadoes ramped up overnight and that is going to continue today unfortunately. Even if the twisters stay silent, the hail, the lightning, the wind, and flash flood potential continues sweeping east and north. Eyes open today, folks. We also have a top alert coming to New Zealand. These images are from back over at Australia, where it utterly embodies the Cyclone Debbie story in just this one sequence. Right now, the moisture is heading at New Zealand. It's likely to get there before we all speak here again tomorrow morning. We've got pressure and radar forecasts, wind up through the atmosphere, and shots of our star to close. It's 5.05 a.m. in the New Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.